Hallelujah. The more honest way of saying it is, he has been involved since before your parents started dating. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, Reverend Paulson. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to take off at the first, because I know some of you, eh? if the thing drags, you will walk away thinking God excused you today from giving offer. So we will start with offer as we also have a good song that will uh, warm up the atmosphere for us. It's good to give. You get it? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't give because it is offer time. Develop that thing in your spirit that there are things which only giving unlocks. Hallelujah. That's why God, the scripture says God loves a cheerful giver. A person who just gets excited at offer three time and says that's, this is the hour I was waiting for. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let's give cheerfully and then uh, we will dive in straight away. So that if the Holy Ghost descends at the end, they don't accuse this service of not having offered. issues you have eh? so they are nothing compared to mine are you getting it <laughs> are you getting it you guys yeah let me tell you a quick story then I want to see some praise around here yeah there is a guy eh, who thought for him he has the worst issues on earth and regularly he would go to God with that complaint say God I look at everybody else eh it is like you took a tithe from all their problems eh, and put it on me. <laughs> yeah, you get it? Yeah. So even when he would be in church and praise is picking up, ah, you see? You see, give us. Give us of, of, of 20, 20, 40. Hallelujah. Practicing. Hey. She says, uh, you know, the praise would pick up. Ah, for him, he's back meditating on... Uh, on how bad these issues are. So one night God spoke to him in a dream. And in that dream, eh, they had appointed a collection center for problems. So now let's say it was uh, the Nakasero Primary School play field eh, down there. That was the collection. Said he left home in the dream. He left very early. He put all his problems in a sack. You get it? Put it on his shoulders and 
he wanted to make sure that he's among the first people to get there. So he gets there. So he's waiting, eh? It's still, it's still early. So six something, the sky begins to clear. Ah, the next guy arrives. He's rolling his three bags in a wheelbarrow. Three, you get it? This guy is like, really? I thought uh, <laughs> mine was the... Yeah. Not long after the wheelbarrow guy had checked in, eh? another fellow checked in in the pickup. He said, really? A pickup. Then, uh, shortly after that, another fellow pitch, p- 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 pitched up, he had hired a tipper. This one that does sand and things. He's like, really? And then the next guy appears in a canter. So he's, he's expecting fellows to be on top of the canter, eh? like as proof that these bags are for many people. No, it was only a driver and one guy. So the guy came out, he asked him, he said, I, I, you mean you're alone? All these are yours in this country? He says, yeah. The next fellow appeared in a Tata. Tata lorry. And then the last guy, a trailer, you get it? So they offloaded all the problems and then the MC took the microphone and said, now, the Bible says, carry one another's burdens. So, here is what we are going to do. We are pulling all these problems and then we will distribute them equally. He picked up his bag quietly and disappeared. <laughs> no, no, no. There is no way eh? he was going to. Eh? Whatever the scripture said about carrying one another's burdens, eh? he was out of that place. Hallelujah. When he woke up from that dream, he knew God had spoken to him. He knew God had said, dude, you think you have problems, eh? Let me collect the ones of the others and divide them, and then you will know what it means to have issues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So one more time, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter. credit six Mm, but uh, we will pick up hallelujah pick up pick up I'm really glad to see Reverend Paulson in our midst we go back a long way Mm, we love back a long way Mm, we come from the season of the old time religion (laughs) hallelujah how many of you know Colin Colin Mugasha Colin Babrukam. How many of you know Colin? Yeah? Uh-huh. A few of you know Colin. Those, those who are our teenagers in the first youth camp. Those of Colin. Yeah. Those guys know what it means to be beaten up. You get it? Not physically. You get it? Yeah, these days you call it abuse. Yeah? Mm. Those days would hammer you with the word. You see? You see how they have turned out? Very fruitful. Hallelujah. There's a group of them that includes a guy who is now lecturing in veterinary medicine. They misbehaved 
in one of the camps. We put them on the back of a pickup. And we told them, we're driving you home. Ah, you leave this soft, soft thing of yours. Counseling. No, for us, we didn't know the word counseling. You get it? Yeah. You misbehaved, eh? You got it. Put them on the back of a pickup. In the evening, after seven, said we're driving you home. And they knew what would await them at home. Yeah. They knew because their parents were from the old school. You get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not you Americanized guys who think, hey, no. Their parents were from the school of spare, not the rod. You get it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey. But we knew what we were doing. We were not going to take them home. We were not going to take them home. We took them just like uh, 300 meters outside the gate at Kazi, the scout site. And then we stopped. And we had a chat with them. We said, guys, should we continue home? They said, no. So we said, what deal are you giving us? And they spoke it themselves. So you take us back, you will not hear of any incident again. We drove back, you get it? No incident to the end. Because these were ringleaders, you get it? Yeah, they spread the word that night. That those guys are bad, you get it? Yeah, yeah, those guys are bad. Those guys are bad, they almost took us. Well, because by the time we exited the gate, eh, there was Susu. They knew they were going home. See, then we turned and became good guys. You get it? Yeah, we wanted a deal. We got the deal. We had a smooth camp, and we had no incident again after that camp. All the subsequent camps, there was peace. Hallelujah. 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 I've been given... Where is the thing, Philip? Something about holistic what? Holistic... Stewardship, which equates to pomposity, you get it? Yeah, those are big words, you get it? Yeah, those are words we used to use in debate. Eh, in Busoka College, Muiri, you get it? Yeah, eh, when we're in A-level, you get it? First main speaker, you get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, first main speaker used to have seven minutes. When the second main speaker, six minutes. The floor speakers, five minutes each. But by the time, by the... Second minute going into the third, eh? S1s and 2s are completely drunk. You get it? With words that don't even add up. You get it? Mm, the electrovalent bonding. You get it? Yeah. We were art students. We didn't even know the meaning of electrovalent. You get it? But it was a good word to use in debates. <laughs> so holistic stewardship. You get it? Stewardship is good enough. Eh? But they had there holistic. Yeah? Intimidation, you get it. Yeah, but I, I really, I want to break down this thing, and I want to stay with this topic, because I don't want anyone to accuse me of having uh, uh, deviated. Hallelujah. Because in simple terms, this is just talking about a practical walk with God. Hallelujah. A practical and a, an accountable walk with God, but a spirit-filled walk. So the scripture God has given me, and you will wonder how it's going to link up, but it will link up. Uh, the scripture God has given me, and it's going to be an unusual day, because I rarely use notes. I usually speak, you know, what they call extempo. I just stand and speak. Today I have notes. It's going to be an unusual day. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Second Corinthians... 13, 14, and I don't trust e-Bibles. I don't trust e-Bibles. I'll die with my hard copy. Yeah. They just won't bury me with it because I don't need it underground. Mm. To remain to one of my grandsons or granddaughters. Mm. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion but I want it in the NIV, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all. And then he says, Amen. Number one, some of you are knowing for the first time today that the thing we call the grace, let's share the grace, that it is actually scripture. Hallelujah. So it's the last verse of 2 Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Now let me point out something quickly. 
if you check at the end of each of Paul's letters and epistles, eh, he has this sort of thing, like the, the, next, uh, uh, the next book is uh, Galatians. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And he says, amen. Those are his concluding words. Ephesians, which is the next one. He says, uh, grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. And he says, amen. The next one is Philippians. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And he says, amen. amen. Colossians is the next one. He says, uh, he says, this salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains, grace be with you, amen. And it goes on and on. In each of them, he closes with an invocation of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is in this particular one that he says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. What does it say to us? It says to us eh, that to pick up just grace and turn it into a doctrine is wrong. Are you getting it? Eh? Grace has relatives. You hear, sister? Grace has cousins. You get it. First cousins. You get it. Yeah. Grace has love. Grace has peace. Hallelujah. And then grace has mercy working alongside it. Now, the other place where you find this is in the opening words of each, 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 each letter and uh, epistle. So, so, for instance, if we go back to Galatians, Galatians 1 3, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You get it? And then if you go to Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you go to Philippians uh, 1, 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You go to Colossians, Colossians 1, 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Same in uh, Thessalonians. Uh, when you look at, let me just check, I, I hope I have it right. When you look at Romans, the one in Romans, uh, Romans chapter 1, Romans, yeah, it's the same. It says, grace to you and peace from, our God, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In one of them, he says grace, I think, to Timothy. Yeah, Timothy must be first Timothy or second Timothy. He says grace, peace, and mercy. Remember, Timothy had issues. One of them was timidity. You get it? So for Timothy, he throws in mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, listen. You don't pick up grace and then run away with it and start throwing it all over the place. In all of them, it is grace and peace. And like I said, to Timothy, he throws in mercy. Hallelujah. So grace doesn't function alone. Grace has first cousins with whom it works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you feel you are under judgment, mercy will come in and say no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when you are troubled, peace will come in and restore you. Hallelujah. The, the, the grace is okay. But there are things that grace alone cannot handle. Are you getting it? However wonderful we make it appear to be. You know, grace comes in for salvation. Hallelujah. Now, like I told you, my heart is on the fellowship of, I don't even, Holy, Holy Spirit doesn't do it for me. The fellowship of the Holy Ghost. You get it? Yeah, boarding schools, eh? especially Christian-founded ones. Eh? There's always talk of ghosts. You get it? Yeah. See, that, that, that's why I prefer the chief ghost. You get it? Eh, the holy ghost. I prefer ghost. You get it? Yeah, I prefer ghost is more intimidating. You get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I talk of ghosts, eh, I know other ghosts are intimidated. Hallelujah. And I didn't make it up. 
Isn't it the scripture which calls him ghost? Holy ghost. Hallelujah. Now, so I want to start with a, a, a holistic one. One that uh, champions holistic stewardship. And it's not in the New Testament. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just bow your heads for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a sister here, and God spoke this to me when I was in the vestry. There's a sister here struggling with timidity. You, you have a heart to serve God. The timidity is what keeps holding you back. Every now and then you say, I wish I was as bold as so and so. I wish I was as bold as so and so. Today, that timidity leaves you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And today you get an infilling of the Holy Spirit that will set you on course for the most fruitful ministry that has ever been seen in your family and in your circle of friends. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go to Exodus. Go to Exodus. Go to Exodus. Exodus. Exodus chapter 35. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And God is speaking to someone from this passage. Mm. God is speaking to someone. God is releasing someone today into their destiny using this passage. Exodus 35, from verse 1. Then Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, these are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. And uh, verse 4, and Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins, dyed, the list goes on. What, was, what were these things for? Verse 10, all, those, all who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle, its tent, its covering. Its... So this, this offering was for the making of the tabernacles and the things that went with it like the tent to dwell in. Are you with me? Now the part we are really looking for is in verse 30. And Moses said to Ash, thank you, Lord. Moses said to the children of Israel, see, the Lord has called by name Bezalel. Hallelujah. The Lord has called by name, called, not just called, but called by name. There are some of you that God today is calling by name, calling out your destiny and calling you out by name. It, it, it says the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of who? Of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So listen, the Holy Spirit is not just for speaking in tongues and feeling good. He has filled him with the spirit of God. For what purpose? He's filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding in knowledge and all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze. Are you with me, somebody? He has called him and filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. Oh, kiddos. You are sitting on gold. Are you getting it? Tell yourself I'm sitting on gold. These days when workmanship is the in thing, eh? See, I told you I'll stick with my hard copy. Don't follow me blindly. You get it? Man, you go into this eh? Uh, IT things. Are you getting it? The day the Lord fills you with that spirit he filled Bezalel with. Eh? When you come up with something, run and patent it quickly. You get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it legal quickly. Are you getting it? Get it patented. Because I'm told the guy, the Kenyan guy who, who is the one who came up with the mobile money thing, those Safaricom guys ripped him off. And God forgive me for what I'm about to say. 
But two, three years ago, when I heard that the Mzungu, who was chief executive officer of Safaricoms, died a bad death, I said, eh, hey, you mess with a black man, you get your trouble, you get it. Yeah, you should have given the guy something, you get it. Because look at what mobile money is doing now. Hmm? You know, the guy came up with the thing. If he had run and patented it quickly, if he had gotten even a low-level lawyer, you get it, to patent it, it would have been in his millions. Because once you patent it, you get it, you pick up money for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Bezalel was given uh, wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels from setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. And then additionally, from verse 34, and he has put in his heart the ability to teach. Hallelujah. He's put in Bezalel's heart. On top of giving him these skills, he has put in his heart the ability to teach. In him, an Aholiab, son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan. God rarely works with an individual alone. You know, you see Moses, the moment he gets into Egypt, his brother Aaron comes in. And his sister Miriam. You, you, you know, you, 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 you see David. Yeah? Guys join him. Soon he has 30, 30 mighty men. You, you know, in a group of about 600. You know, so here, you immediately see a holy up. What I'm trying to say with that statement is, eh, when you see an anointing on someone, it's unlikely that God will let them function alone. You get it? Yeah. See, many of you know me as a, you know, overnight, eh? see? That's why they usually put me around one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> then overnight express, eh? Yeah. Goes up to five. You get it? Yeah, non-stop. Non-stop. And even at my age, eh? I, I, listen, yeah, I just go through it very casually. You get it? But believe it or not, we picked up that anointing from Dan Magumba. Dan Magumba was the first guy to run that anointing. When I came from Bali in the mid-90s, Dan Magumba was already running those Friday overnights eh, here. Would stand here and whatever, and I would look at him. <laughs> like this dude, eh, the whole night, you get it? Yeah. Mm, but something in me knew, eh, if I hung around long enough, yeah, one day I would, I don't know at what point it happened. Yeah, but at some point, it happened. And I found I was doing what? Magumba was doing, you get it? Yeah, now when we meet, eh? you get it? Yeah, when we meet, he's playing from the other side and playing from this side. Hallelujah. Mm. So if you want it, have Magumba here more frequently. He's in Kampala. Yeah, in fact now, eh, the anointing is now more solid on him than at that time. Yeah, you just have him here. Have him for two, three sessions. Eh? You will all become prayer leaders. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, at home, eh? Hey, those guys will think it's the usual you of one or two scriptures. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You start at nine, eh? at ten you are still at it. You get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And mommy who thinks she's powerful, eh? she begins to say, "Hey, this girl of mine, eh? something has happened." You get it? Yeah, eleven you are still at it. You get it? Hallelujah! And it's flowing. Hey, not just at it, but it is flowing. So he has put in his heart the ability to teach in him and a holy of the son of. Ahisamak of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen of the weaver. Those who do every work and those who design artistic works. People, are you with me? Are you seeing holistic stewardship now? Practical living as one filled with the Holy Spirit. And these guys actually went on to deliver using the gifts people brought. They, they made everything that God had commanded uh, to be made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the, 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 the Spirit of God is a coach. He's an instructor. Hallelujah. He's, he's a tutor. And he does it 
not only in things we consider uh, spiritual ministry things, but in practical. Hey, sister, if he touches you and tells you, I want you to go into designing, eh? tailoring and designing, uh, doesn't matter whether you have an MSc, you get it. In accounting, you get it. Yeah, you first leave accounting, you get it. Look for a sewing machine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting me? Lay hands on that, sewing, on that sewing machine and say, machine, listen to me. Hmm? I have not set aside accounting in vain. Hmm. The Holy Ghost has told me eh, that I should acquire. Let me tell you what you will come up with. Are you getting it? It's the likes of Sudir's wife who will be looking for you. Yeah. And if you are wise, eh, you quote accordingly. Are you getting it? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, ah, you invoice accordingly. Ah, ah, according. When Natasha comes, eh, the big man's daughter, you invoice accordingly. Hallelujah. Yeah, when the provost comes, you also invoice accordingly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even if it is the same thing, eh, eh, you tone it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So listen, he tutors, he instructs practically, practical things. But when you come out with it, whether it is just building, whether it is gardening, you get it. Yeah, what, what, what do they call these things, these guys who design compounds? Yeah? Landscaping. By the time you are done, you get it. Yeah? Because again, that one, eh, you invoice accordingly. Hallelujah. If you know a guy has just looted eh, a place, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. But after, are you the one who looted? You invoice accordingly. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let some of that loot come. You get it. Hey, glory. <laughs> Have I spoken badly? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's in the papers. A guy just looted some place, eh? and he calls you, he or she calls you to landscape. You invoice accordingly. Around 30 a.m., you get it. Yeah, you tell them this work is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is going to take like three weeks, you get it. Yeah, you, three days you are done, you get it. Yeah, the remaining 21 days, you just send guys to hang around there. Pay them 20,000, you get it. Yeah, yeah. Just to hang around, you get it. Yeah, but for you are done, you've already moved elsewhere. Thank you, Lord. The Spirit of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, brings revelation. Now, we hear a lot about revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and, but I want, I want to emphasize the Spirit of God brings revelation. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit brings revelation. And I want, I want, to, I want again, because there's plenty of it in Paul's letters and epistles. But I, I want to bring it from the Old Testament so that we understand that some of these are not just new covenant concepts. They are right from the Old Covenant. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Okay? And I particularly picked that one. Eh? There are things we get stuck with. Yeah? You, you, you must be slain in the Holy Spirit so that you feel really like the Holy Ghost came upon you. You get it? Yeah, when people are slain in a meeting, eh, that's when we feel like the Holy Ghost moved. But for Ezekiel, God did not slay him. He said, stand up on your feet. And then when you look at the next verse, then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. He did not slay him. He set him on his feet. Hallelujah. And I heard him who spoke to me. I heard him who spoke to me. There was clarity. Hallelujah. Spirit of God gives revelation. And then the Spirit of God gives visions and dreams. Hallelujah. This, this, listen, this is not just new covenant. It's not just after the day of Pentecost when Peter quoted from Joel. In the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your uh, old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And on all my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my 
spirit. No, it's not just uh, after the day of Pentecost. No, even before. Because in Job chapter 33, Job chapter 33, thank you, Lord. I, I, I hope it is making sense to someone. Job chapter 33, verse 14. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So God may speak in one way or in another, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men. The thing I want to emphasize, and I've been on it for a year or two now, guys, I am no longer in for vague dreams. Am I speaking vaguely today? Am I speaking vaguely? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. If God is going to speak to us in dreams and visions, it is going to be without vagueness. The vagueness is interference. Are you getting it? Bad network. Did you hear me? I can't hear you. The network is. Are you getting it? When we get uh, these vague dreams, eh, the network is bad. Either you need to get into a good network zone or you need to upgrade your set. You get it? In most cases, it's the set which needs upgrading. People, are you with me? I am determined to upgrade in this area until I'm on a satellite phone. The one that doesn't depend on MTN or Airtel or whichever tell. You get it? Are you getting me? Yeah, satellite. You get it? Anywhere where people are saying there is no network here, I'm just on phone. Hallelujah. <coughs> Why? <coughs> God cannot purpose to speak to us in dreams and visions and then be vague about it. Hallelujah. 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 My grandfather was a lay reader. He fought in First World War. Became a Christian in the World War. He learned Luganda in the... Because the, the, the British Army had chaplaincies. Even by Second World War, they had chaplaincies. That guy went deep. And I learned just a few years ago that my great-grandmother, their mother, moved away from where they had first settled because of the witchcraft there. That's when I understood why my grandfather got so deep in the word. I figured out that when he discovered the Christian faith, he discovered what the only thing that could counter the witchcraft that his mother had run away from. Are you people getting me? Yeah, listen, listen to me. Listen to me, people. That's why when I hear people rationalizing, eh, waxing intellectually, eh, there is nothing like witchcraft. Ah! I have no time to argue. Are you getting it? Because I grew up watching a guy who read the Bible as if he was paid to read it. My grandfather. And my mother tells him, whenever he would come to my parents' workplace, in the middle of the night, he would get out of the house and stand in the balcony uh, behind. And I still remember that house, the government house. And my father would come out to try and bring him in. And my mother says she would always hear him telling my father, ah, leave me, they're talking to me. You get it? Yeah. He dreamt. Now, that grace usually doesn't. Because, again, when you people start arguing about, oh, there's nothing like generational curses. You first leave curses. Let's talk about generational blessings. Are you getting it? That grace is still there. My mother, after my father's death, shortly after, I think because of the weight of the grief and whatever, got born again and joined the Tukutende Reza. At first I was like, ah, Lord, thank you for saving her, but you should have brought her into our circles of shouting and whatever. Until I realized, eh, see the Tukutende Reza guys are close-knit fellowship 
What she needed was not our shouting. She needed fellowship. You get it? Yeah. And she's still there up to today. But my mother is a Tukutende Reza who dreams. And she dreams accurately. Are you getting it? Accurately. She's 83 this year. Dreams accurately. One time she dreamt. Before, now we have a, you know, a permanent church structure. But when it was still a grass church structure, she dreamt that... Uh, these ants eh, had infiltrated the roof, but nobody could see them because of where, they were, and they were eating away at the, 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 the timber, the poles. She went to church, called some young men, told them, climb, that, check that spot. They found it exactly as she had seen it in a dream. Another time, she says she dreamt of three snakes in separate parts of the compound. All those three snakes manifested, not all at once, but all of them manifested and with each one of them, there was a young man present to kill in the, in the time they manifested. Are you getting it? Listen. Vagueness means network issues. Hallelujah. Network issues, you know it can be from the service provider, but it can also be from the set you are using. And I'm saying for many of us, it is the set which needs upgrading. Hallelujah. Uh, ah, guys, talk to me. I said hallelujah. Amen. Listen, you need your systems upgraded. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, 3 p.m. Eh? It's not just for coming here to look nice. You get it? Yeah, and clap nicely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And hang out afterwards. You get it? Pick up, take away. You get it? Coffee. Your sophisticated things. For us, we pick maize in Soroti after... Boiled maize, you get it. Yeah, it's what I pick. They sell it just outside the cathedral gate. You get it. Boiled maize, original. You get it. Hallelujah. And fresh from the garden. You, are, are you getting me? Yeah, not this one which has stayed over for three days. No. Hallelujah. So listen to me. Upgrade your systems. Hey. I told you about the Magumba days. Sometimes after here, we would head straight to Kazi on Saturday morning. Because eh, we knew better than to go home. It, 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 listen, it would be great loss. You get it? Yeah, first of all, we're all bachelors. We're not accountable to any, anybody at home. You get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If even our houses, eh, our rooms, they would be glad that we didn't go back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, so we just headed to Kazi to continue. I want an anointing in this place eh, that after we are done with service, three people are walking home. Eh? Yeah? People think you are talking, but you are in prayer. You get it? Yeah, the ones that are going towards Watoto are in prayer. You get it? The ones that are going towards uh, Sheraton are in prayer. The ones that are in a vehicle together, eh? Holy Ghost, demons, one day here when you pass, eh? Those one day get demons which don't sleep. They just scatter. You get it? See, there's trouble approaching. Hallelujah. It's a chariot approaching. A chariot of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so listen. The Holy Ghost, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, brings dreams and visions. My emphasis this evening is with clarity. With these issues, issues, eh? guys who keep disturbing you around here, eh? that they are stopping this. Tell God, I have uh, my uncle's widow. Her son is an executive director of one of the NGOs in, in Tinder. That woman, that one is now, I think, 77 or 79. For her, she's Pentecostal, PAG, Pentecostal Assemblies of God, under which were total falls. She's bad news. Ah, bad, you get it? Bad. We had a function at home three months ago. Eh? The moment she indicated she wanted to talk to me, I chucked everybody else. You get it? Picked a chair quickly and sat with her because I knew testimonies were going to begin to flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That one, her mother told, sorry, her son, this son of ours, my cousin, told me that she's at a point where, ah, no, 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 it's not my cousin. It is she herself in the process of conversation. She told me, said, you see, eh, there was this issue disturbing me. 
He said, I told God, eh, I'm going to bed. Mm, I'm going to bed. Speak to me about this issue tonight. People, are you getting it? Ah, ah, that's what you call fellowship with the ghost. Hallelujah. You tell the ghost, I'm going to sleep. And that's the best time for you to talk to me. Hallelujah. God revealed the matter to her while she was asleep. By the time she woke up, she had the solution. I wish somebody was excited. Because see, you have issues. You sisters. Three spirit-filled guys converge on you at once. <laughs> Each one eh, says God spoke to them. In fact, they are, I'm being too fair. Some of you, eh, some of your situation is so lousy that it is two spirit-filled guys and one guy who is not yet born again. But even that non born again is troubling you. That one, the scripture should knock him out immediately. <laughs> Hallelujah. However appealing he is, you get it. Yeah, there is no communion between light and darkness. But you have such a situation. Eh? Upgrade yourself to where you go to bed. Eh? Brief the ghost properly. Brief him properly. You get it? Yeah, there are these three guys. Eh? Name them. Are you getting it? Don't, because you might say, which three guys? There are many guys at church. You get it? Yeah. Which three guys? Name them. You get it? No, no, no. Even make your recommendations. Say, this one, uh -uh, I have doubts. Mm. This one, they are there. You get it? It's this one I'm leaning towards. You get it? He said, but I want your opinion on the matter. And then go to bed. If you don't get it the first night, within a few nights you are going to get it. People, are you with me? Some of you, it is, you see, You've been praying for a job for 18 months. And Satan has this bad thing of when you get the breakthrough, then two or three jobs come at the same time. Two or three offers, you get it? Talk to the ghost, are you getting it? Yeah? De develop a relationship with the ghost through fellowship that you can tell him, so, you know, I've been petitioning for a good job. But now... Three have converged on me at once. Which one? Now, once you cultivate that relationship, things will just begin to flow. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Talk to him. Talk. For God's sake, don't we say our father who art in heaven? Which father is not concerned about his children? Didn't, didn't the Lord Jesus say, if your earthly fathers who are evil it will not give you a snake when you ask for fish or a stone when you ask for bread. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who love him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So visions are dreams. And then the Holy Spirit renews. He renews. He renews. Some of our issues around exhaustion, I'm exhausted, I'm spiritually flat, blah, 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 blah. The scripture says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But the other way of putting it is those that fellowship with the ghost, with the Holy Ghost, will renew their... So one of the reasons you need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is so that you are regularly, your strength is regularly renewed. And please, when you are running dry, don't force life like you, you people say. Don't force life. Yeah? A number of you here drive. And, and you know, the, the, a car eh, depends on regular service. Regular service doesn't mean anything is spoiled. But when the oil has stayed too long, longer than it is supposed to stay, the car starts losing power. Are you getting it? Yeah. Now you take that car, nothing is spoiled but it's starting to lose, take it for service. They change engine oil, they change the air filter, they change the, 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 the oil filter. Yeah, guys, when you touch that girl, eh, after, eh, you just kick it, eh, comes to life, you get it? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the sound alone, eh? you're like, hey, I hope I find the road empty. Yeah, because I want to run this girl real good today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, fellowship of the Holy Ghost, renewal of strength. And then, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit also results in refreshment. Acts 3, 19. The, the Isaiah is Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, that is a re- 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 renewal of strength. Then refreshment is Acts 3.19. The Apostle Peter is speaking. And he says, repent. Turn away from your sins. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. When things have become stuffy in your spiritual life, when things have become stuffy in the fellowship, you need that refreshment from the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me tell you people. Nobody refreshes like the Holy Ghost. There is nothing as refreshing as a move of God's spirit. Hallelujah. That's what I'm telling you people. eh? These doctrines eh, that we get stuck with. Uh -uh, Me, I'm not there. Me, I'm looking for what works. You get it? Yeah, as long as it's scriptural. Yeah. Are you getting it? I'm not about to get stuck with one garage. No. No. Yeah, if I'm told eh, there's another garage that sorts out the matter better. Man, I'm going there. I remember years ago, Lan Paulson, there's a tire which had bullied me, man. These Kampala guys would fix it. And the thing was still good. But I ran into something. and So the rest of it was still good. That took it to about three different guys here in Kampala. Just after a few days, it is flat again. So I drive into Soroti for Christmas. And the, talk of God's uh, goodness. I drove into Shell. Shell. Shell is one of the first petrol stations as you enter the main part of town, the main street. I drove into Shell. I don't know to do what. I saw an old man fixing tires. I went over to him. I said, this, this tire, eh? can you fix it? He said, bring it out. Old fellow, eh? Yeah, he said, bring it. So I left it there. He said, come and pick it at such and such a time. And those guys, they don't even charge much, you get it? Those seasoned guys. I picked up that tire. Following morning, intact. Three days later, intact. My entire duration, my entire stay of Christmas, intact. I drove back to Kampala, intact. Hallelujah. Intact. Hallelujah. Times of refreshing, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Sometimes you need that refreshment of the Holy Ghost. It is not doctrine you need at that point. However important doctrine is, you need the Holy Spirit to blow through your spiritual life. And that's what some of you are in need of this evening. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. When the Holy Ghost comes, forget your dignity. Even if you are known as the most dignified dude in the, in the, in the 3 p.m., you get it. Ah, uh-uh, throw away your dignity and prance around, you get it. Yeah, go home refreshed. You won't even need to jog this evening. Hallelujah. Just go straight to the shower mm, after jogging in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, of course, there is repentance itself. Acts chapter 2. And uh, verse 38 and 39, let me read this one. Acts 2, 38 and 39. I realize uh, time is becoming an issue now. Acts 2, 38 and 39. Acts 2, 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off as many as the Lord our God will call. So one of the things that the fellowship with the Holy Ghost does is brings about repentance. And yet it is the same repentance which opens the way for us to receive the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost preempts the repentance in order that he may fill us with himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, now I'm getting to the good part, the part that uh, people like these days. The Holy Ghost, the fellowship with the Holy Ghost results in blessing. Hallelujah. Uh -uh, You people, you want prosperity. You leave this thing of I receive, I receive. Man, you can shout I receive until you are hoarse. 
you develop fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah. There's in the scriptures here, and this blessing shall follow you. Did it say you shall pursue them? It says they shall. And then what, will, what else will they do? They will overtake you so that you can keep an eye on them. You get it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and uh, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Ah, ah, say it. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Say it again. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Say I am redeemed from the curse of the law. And see, continues, for it is written, cast is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse, sorry, 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 sorry. For it is written, cast is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14. That, so he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So that what? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. In Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Are you getting it? So the key to prosperity, the curse has been taken away on the cross. Hallelujah. And the blessing of Abraham has come upon us. But the unlocking of it is that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through Faith. Are you getting it? Now, let, let's quickly join it with Romans. Let's quickly join it with Romans 4.16 so that we, we complete it. And, and I, I don't have time to go into this in depth, but I want you to pick up something today uh, that is important. Romans 4.16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So the natural born Jews, they are the seed of Abraham out of the law. You and I are the seed of Abraham through Christ. <coughs> Hallelujah. Because Abraham was promised, verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at uh, Ephesians. This one is not in my notes. I hope I can locate it. Ephesians. Ephesians. Uh, let me just get it. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Therefore remember that you... Once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. The NIV says strangers, you get it? Eh? Before you, 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 you were born again, you were a stranger, an alien to the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Go back to Ephesians 3, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, among other things, is the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow. It's the blessing of the covenant promise of prosperity. Guys, up to today, listen, if you get hold of a Jew, one of the nations in Africa with the worst inflation now and the worst economy is Zimbabwe. If you get a Jew and you take him to Zimbabwe, you get it? Give him $20. Are you getting it? And just leave him in the streets of Harare. You get it? Check him out three years later. Yeah? He will be dealing in real estate. You get it? And living in his own bungalow with a swimming pool. Are you getting it? Why? Because he carries the blessing of Abraham. Are you with me? Out of that $20, he's going to locate a synagogue. And he's going to start by removing $2 and taking it to the synagogue. 
eh, is going to activate the covenant promises. Man, I used to hear about that and I would be like, Cha, Lord, why was I born a kumam? You get it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Until I landed on the scriptures and I realized there are those who are the seed of Abraham by law and there are those who are by the faith of Abraham. I'm in that category. You get it? Don't rule me out of anything. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, don't rule me out of anything. You see, every now and then I pick a rumor from Kampala. Ever since I camped in Soroti in the perfect will of God, I pick a rumor. Eh? A rumor. Ignoramuses. Eh? Eh, biblical ignoramuses. Saying, Mbu, I'm badly off. Look at me. Do I look like I'm badly off? Sister, am I badly off? Eh? Uh, do I look like I'm badly off? Do I look like a, guy, a fellow who is stressed up? Eh? 33,000 promises in the scripture. And I'm stressed up. For what? I sleep soundly. You get it? Hallelujah. I, I'm the seed of? Did you hear me? Don't rule me out of anything. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of these days, eh? When you see me walking towards a brand new, eh? And using a remote. It is not coincidence. You get it? <laughs> Hallelujah. It is deliberate. Hallelujah. I'm walking towards it deliberately. And if you check the logbooks, it is in my name. Hallelujah. I'm the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. Some things may delay, but God's delays are never his denials. Yeah. Some delays are just so that fellowship can continue. Yeah. Because, yeah. God knows us, eh? sometimes if he answers quickly, end of fellowship. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So we are the seed of Abraham. But the curse is broken that the, 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 the blessing of Abraham might come upon us Gentiles and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, that we may fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Uh, boldness. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. After these people had been intimidated by the religious leaders. Uh, I almost say it, maybe that is happening to around here, but I didn't say it. Uh, I didn't say anything. Yeah, I didn't say anything. After they had been intimidated, verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. I prophesy under unction of the Holy Ghost. There is a boldness coming upon 3 p.m. service. Did you hear me? Ah, there is a boldness coming upon you people. Are you getting it? There is a boldness coming upon you people. It's going to be such a boldness eh, that the committee will say, let us invite Uncle Sam eh, uh, for the youth camp. And somebody will stand up. Ah, ah, wait, wait, wait. Somebody will stand up and say, we don't need Uncle Sam. You get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can handle it. And not in a bad way. We say we can handle this thing ourselves. Boldness. You get it? Yeah, that if he comes, eh, let him come in a coaching capacity. Hallelujah. Eh, let him come eh, just to stand up. and. You get it? Yeah, coaching capacity. Yeah, but not again to... Yeah, the boldness is coming upon you people. Hallelujah. Because these guys moved in such boldness that the religious leaders of the day said, these guys are ordinary unschooled men. But the scripture says, but they remember that they had been with Jesus. There is a boldness coming upon you people. That you will go out into schools and win hundreds to Christ. Hallelujah. You will go out into campuses and boldly with posters. Yeah? One week, all saints uh, 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 youth service is going to be holding a crusade in Freedom Square in Makerere. Are you getting it? In Chamboko, in whatever square. Are you getting it? In Moobs, are you getting it? Hallelujah. And the preachers will be from among you. Hallelujah. Boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Yeah, in fact, one of you will say, that guy, if you are inviting him, maybe he should dye his hair when he's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, but listen, boldness. 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 Hallelujah. 
boldness. There are times when we need boldness to speak the word of God. And this boldness is not just about preaching. Listen, there are situations where certain corners you as an individual. You need boldness. Are you getting it? You need to say, Satan, I'm a child of God. God. I remember when I was doing orientation many years ago uh, with Scripture Union. Uh, now Reverend Dr. Ben Tumuhairu. He was the one in charge of Western, and he joined, I think, a year or two before me. So I was, I was sent to spend two or three weeks with him. Yeah, those schools in your Western areas, I've been to those schools, you get it. Yeah, been to those schools. We roamed with Ben on a motorcycle. But I remember on the day of the Tukutende Reza Fellowship, he said this evening we are going to join the Tukutende Reza people. When we reached there, the life can be interesting. Eh? Now I says, scruffy little fellow, you get it? Yeah, those guys said, share the word with us. <laughs> See, I didn't even know, because I hadn't fellowshiped with the ghost for very long, you get it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know how to. Eh, but somehow, eh, a scripture came up in me. Paul, when he was about to be caned by the Roman centurion, eh? the Roman centurion had given an order for him to be, and then Paul spoke up and said, is it lawful to cane a Roman to flog a Roman citizen? And the man I said, you mean you're a citizen? <laughs> and Paul rubbed it in, eh? he said, by birth. Because there was buying it, I was telling him, it's my father who bought it. For me, I was born. The one who is born a citizen is higher than the one who, the guy said, untie him immediately. Then I related it to, remember there are all these old people, eh, to Kuten de Reza. Eh, at that time I was calling them old, eh? now you are calling me old. <laughs> <laughs> the old is old is. Eh? So one of the ladies, you know, you know these matriarchs, eh? big Munyankole lady, mm. dark, eh? you know, serious. Mm. When I finished, she stood up and she said, young man, you have solved my problem today. Said Satan has been flogging me at will. But today you have told us that we should tell him, eh, is it lawful to flog a child of God? He said, that's what I'm going to be telling him from today. Anytime he comes with sickness, I will tell him, is it lawful to flog a child of God? So sometimes you need boldness at that level. Brock is almost killing you, you get it? Yeah, I mean, you are so, <laughs> you are so broke, you are forgetting the color of currency, you get it? <laughs> You need boldness, you get it? Yeah. Tell Brock, get out of my life. Are you getting it? I am the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. I, I am blessed because I'm the seed of... I'm saying if I see you around here again, you will get trouble. Hallelujah. Tell Brock to get out of your life. Sometimes you need boldness at that level. Hallelujah. And then power. That one we know, Acts 1, 8, and you shall receive power after the, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then there is Acts 10, 38. Uh, you, you know, Jesus Christ, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went around preaching, teaching, and doing good. Hallelujah. So, fellowship of, with the Holy Ghost results in power. Because that's our other problem. I don't want to just talk about power. I want to manifest power. Hallelujah. Ah, sister, did you hear me? What do I want to manifest? Power, you get it. Not umeme, Holy Ghost power, you get it. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost power. January this year, we had the annual, uh, the annual Anglican Believers Conference. Big. This year we had like 2,500 in Bethany Girls School right next to the, right at the diocese. There is a young man who had been brought maybe late 20s, but most likely early 30s. You know, he had issues. He had issues, the devil was troubling him. And uh, his relatives had brought him, men, and they were always like hanging around him to rescue him. On the first day when Bishop ministered, he took off running, went and ran around Bishop's car, I think three or four times and did a few other things. And then I had later, I think on the second day, he, he accosted the... Uh, uh, one of the elderly archdeacons, you, you, you know, they, they, they grabbed him before he could do him harm. So he was in that sort of state. 
So, and we started on s Sunday evening. So now, Friday, I'm standing up at the Watantiza High platform. I'm standing up there uh, overseeing proceedings. And I see them, his, his, his relatives at the foot of the, st at, at the bottom of the st steps, restraining him. He wants to come up to the platform. Hey, guys, words came out of my mouth. Eh? I said, you leave the guy, let him come. But those guys could, didn't believe me. They didn't believe me because they had seen him do things. You get it? Yeah. So they kept restraining him. At some point, I think they got taken up in uh, the prayers that were going on, eh? and they loosened their grip on him. So I'm standing up there overseeing proceedings. Some of the choir people are with me. Suddenly, the guy breaks loose and runs up the steps and comes bounding toward me. When he was about a meter away, he stood still, looked at me, and then I just did this, back on him, there were empty chairs. I, I back on him to, 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 to the chair, and he sat down. Come! After about six, seven minutes, he got up on his own, walked down the steps, calmly. Went and stood with his relatives, and shortly after, he walked away, and they followed him. Now, I did not, like, click immediately about what had happened. It is a number of days later when the euphoria from the conference had cleared. That's when I realized, boy, that guy had come for me. Yeah? <laughs> and where was I standing? Where everybody could see me. You get it? Guys, sometimes we manifest power without knowing it. Because eh, I then remembered eh, that archdeacon whom he had accosted a few days earlier. He came afterwards, passed by me, eh? stood there and looked at me. He never said anything. But now, many days later, after my head had cleared, that's when I realized he was saying, dude, what, how did you do it <laughs> exactly? <laughs> how did you do it? How did you stop that fellow? So, but listen, we carry power. Hallelujah. When we fellowship with the ghost, power is not only in us, it is, around us. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, the final one now. This one I'm going to summarize. <laughs> it might make you guys invite me again. Hallelujah. Hey, listen to me. The unleashing of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fellowship with the Holy Ghost results in the unleashing of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are the instruments of war. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They are summarized in 1 Corinthians 12 and continued a little bit in 14. 13 is the chapter of love. They are in three general categories. There are nine of them, the gifts of the Spirit. The other ones that, uh, Simon, you remember yesterday, the ones we touched on yesterday from Ephesians, those are offices, Okay. Uh, apostle, prophet, uh, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Those are offices. Those are ministry offices. Elijah was in the office of prophet. You get it? Uh, yeah, Elisha was in the office of prophet. Paul was in the office of apostle. You get it? Agabus was in the office of prophet. Uh, you get Timothy was an apostle, but also a pastor and a teacher. That's why Paul left him many times in places. No, those are offices. The gifts of the Spirit are nine, as listed in 1 Corinthians 12, the first few verses. They are in three broad categories, okay? There is revelation, there is, uh, there is revelation, there is inspiration, and then there is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So word of wisdom, word of uh, knowledge, okay? And then... Uh, 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 prophecy. Those are revelatory gifts. Hallelujah. And they go with utterance. The mouth has to be used. Hallelujah. And then there are gifts of power. Hallelujah. F uh, faith, healing. Okay? And, and, and one of the others, gifts of power. Hallelujah. Uh, working of miracles. So, so, so uh, faith, healing, working of miracles. Those are gifts of power. 
and then the, the gifts of inspiration. Hallelujah. Gifts of inspiration. Hallelujah. So that's why you find speaking in tongues, interpretation of, of, of tongues. I think I've, I've, I've mixed up something there because there's also discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. So it, it may be discerning of spirits that falls with the revelatory. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, but they are in those three broad categories inspiration, revelation, and then power. Are, are you with me? So tongues and interpretation of... Now that's where people get confused because when you hear people saying you should not speak in tongues publicly. No, 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 no. He said except with interpretation. Hallelujah. Now when we all take off in prayer eh, and you are bombarding your tongues here and bombarding my tongues, there is no problem. The problem is when you, you say you have a testimony and you come here and you start giving the testimony in tongues and there is no interpretation. Hallelujah. Now, interpretation of tongues, eh, it's both inspiring and at the same time it unleashes power. Hallelujah. 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 I, I may not have time to go so deep, but the fellowship with the Holy Ghost results in the release of those nine gifts. Are you with me? There are those of you here. Listen. When you speak in tongues, you yourself, you feel something. Today, you will move into interpretation of tongues. That, because there are tongues which are for personal edification. But you know it yourself that sometimes you notice that the tongues are different. Are you getting it? Those are the ones which need... <coughs> interpretation, not just in a public setting. <coughs> if you listen carefully, immediately you finish speaking those tongues, eh, God will tell you what it is about. You remember I told you about receiving solutions through dreams. One other way you can receive it is through interpretation of tongues. One of the things that happens with me, every now and then, those heavy tongues will come. And now I'm careful to make sure they last for as long as possible. Hallelujah. And as soon as I'm done, I know that whatever situation Satan had raised up has been dismantled. Now, sometimes they come when I'm actually in a situation. Sometimes they come in anticipation of situations. When they come and I'm actually in a situation, listen, I will flow in it, you know, sometimes switch gears, switch gears, switch gears, and minutes later, it lifts. I know the, the problem is solved. So tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's why I told you these are weapons of war. The gifts of the spirit. So one of the outcomes of fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost is the release of the gifts of the spirit. And one of the things that scripture emphasizes when you read 1 Corinthians 12, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Are you someone? Eh? Are you someone? Does that mean that you fall in to each one? Are you getting it? So there is nothing like I don't have a gift. If you have been in that category, begin to say to yourself, to each one. Are you getting it? Tell the devil, Satan, to each one. You get it? Yeah. Ah, and then tell the devil, my name is so and so. Hallelujah. I am each one. You get it? Hallelujah. I am among each one. People, are you getting me? Uh -uh. From today, there is nothing like, for me, no gift. To each one. The, not just the gift, the manifestation, the outward, outworking is given to each one for the common good. And then tell the devil, if it is not word of wisdom, it is word of knowledge. Say, Satan, if it is not word of knowledge, it is faith. If it is not faith, it is discerning of spirits. If it is not discerning of spirits, it is working of miracles. If it is not working of miracles, it is prophecy. If it is not prophecy, it is speaking in tongues. If it is not tongues, it is interpretation of 
tongues. And then tell him, devil, by the way, I'm not restricted to one. Mm. Mm. T- tell him, tell him the scripture doesn't restrict me to only one. You get it? Yeah. Mm. T- tell him, did I do only one subject in A level? Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell him combinations work even in gifts of the spirit. Hallelujah. Mm. T- 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 tell him I'm taking a combination. Mm. I'm, take, I'm moving from zero to a combination. Tell him, devil, I left all level. You get it? Where there is crowding. You get it? Mm. But I've entered combination time. Did you hear me, somebody? Yes, no more moving around saying, I don't know my gift. I don't have a gift. No. Your gift will manifest. Hallelujah. And it will manifest with clarity. And many of you, you have already been operating in the gifts. You just don't know. Ah. See, you are the one in the meetings with your friends. I'm not talking of a youth committee meeting. With your group of friends, eh? Eh, the girls you hang out with, eh? or the guys you hang out with, you are the one who usually says, eh, when there is uh, some matter, maybe you, you need to do something as a group, eh? and people say, ha, ah, but where are we going to get this money? You are the one who usually says, guys, let's trust God. Money will come. Our God is not poor. You have a gift of faith. You get it? Yeah, when, when guys are down, eh, you are the one who manifests faith. Are you getting it? Yeah, to another faith by the same spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, when one of you comes, eh, say, hey, guys, I need to see a doctor. You are usually the first to say, but why don't we first pray for you? You get it? You have a gift of healing. Are you getting it? You have a gift of healing. That's why you keep saying, let's first Pray. Hallelujah. You are the one who usually walks into a meeting, eh? maybe 3 p.m. and you say something is wrong today. Something is wrong around here. The gift of discerning of spirits. You are sensing that there is a wrong spirit in. You just don't know what it is. Hallelujah. Go and study the gifts. Pick up books and read about the gifts. Until you have mastered it, and then begin to flow in the gifts. People, are you hearing me? One testimony, then we are going to go into prayer. Worship, I want to hear you pray for a few minutes. You get it? And then I will release you. Listen to me. There's a time, eh? Believe it or not, I had three Sundays in Namirembe Cathedral. How many? Three. Three. Uh -uh. Not in all saints, in Namirembe Cathedral. Three services, including the most conservative one, the 10 o'clock. Apollon Sibambi was still prime minister. And he would always come and sit in this privileged place. Uh, uh, Reverend Canon Musifu, the brother of the late Bishop Kauma, he had asked me to do those three Sundays on giving. But the third Sunday, I knew, eh, man, this place is too good to miss out on altar call. So I negotiated with the clergy. I said, now, next Sunday, remove one or two things so that I have just five extra minutes. How many? Just five extra minutes. So I negotiated the deal they had agreed. I came, I saw the adjustments in the service, in the first service. What I didn't know was that the previous Friday, the last batch of high school kids had come back on holiday. So the cathedral was unusually full. Unusually full for the first service. Guys, I played ball. Eh? Now remember, I have five extra minutes. So the 20 that I usually did, because their services are one and a half hours, had gone to 25. Around the 11th minute, I'm not pretending to be an expert in hearing. But fellowship with the Holy Ghost results in hearing. I had the ghost say, dude, begin to wind up. My mind is saying, wind up. I have time. I continued a little bit. The voice came again, begin to wind up. So by the 13th minute, I began to wind up. 14th minute, I mean, altar call. By 16th minute, eh? Guys have their eyes closed. You get it? They are praying the sinners. Prayer. Then you know how we do it. You say if you pray that prayer and you mean it, put up your hand. 
hands went up all over the place. Let me tell you, there was cha cha cha, the floodgates opened. Do you get it? So, what you guys don't know, for us evangelists, Reverend Paulson knows it. When you see the first hand go up, it's like eh, the premiership when a guy has scored a goal. It's just we don't run, eh, but you're like, hallelujah! Hey! Eh? When you see the first hand go up, now imagine when you see a mob of hands like that. Excitement was killing me, man. Hey, hands went up. Now, there was an old man in the middle, if you know Namrembe Kathedu, because he's huge. It's an old man in the middle. See, I was calling him old at that time. Now you are calling me old. See, an old man in the middle there, in a white cans one, a black coat. His hand went up. When I say stand up, the guy stood up with a mob of young people around him. The time I really knew he was serious, because I would have excused him if he had not walked forward. When I said walk forward, got out of his pew and walked forward. He came and stood at the altar with that mob of young people and bowed his head. And the clergy took over and prayed. But what was the key? The operation of the gifts of the Spirit. The fellowship with the Holy Ghost. That in spite of the time I had negotiated, when he said in the 11th minute, begin to wind up. And I obeyed. And from that day, I have tried to cooperate with the ghost on that thing. When he tells you to wind up, wind up. You get it? Ah, whether you still have an hour left, wind up. Because he intends to move like crazy that day. And he's saying, get out of my way. Say you, get out of my way. Get out of the way I want to move among my people. What a harvest that day. And I'm telling you, this thing they tell, you hear someone testify and they witnessed in a taxi and you are dying inside. You get it, a taxi. What am I doing? How do I open my mouth in a taxi? You will sit in the taxi and the Holy Ghost will nudge you. You get it? Yeah. Holy Ghost will nudge you. And you will speak up and say, you people, before we take off, let us pray. And suddenly you will realize a willingness in that group. One hour into the journey, eh, people survive an accident and they turn to you and say, thank you for that prayer. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? When it is the Holy Ghost, it comes with the boldness, with everything that you need for the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Are you in the mood to fellowship with the ghost? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Are you in the mood to fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Stand up on your feet now. When peace... Like a river attended my way when so rose like sea billows roll what a Whatever my circumstances has told me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. One more time, when peace like a river, when peace like a Thank you, Lord. Well, 
God in His will. With my words for me of the next I want that stanza that says no Satan should buffet no trial should come let this blessed assurance control mm. put it up for me put it up for me it's on this screen but not on this one put it up on these other screens as well put it up on the screen that stanza which says no Satan should buffet no trial should come let this blessed yeah that one Though Satan should buffet, no trial should come. Let me rest assured as God established to keep coming back but one of these days will break loose completely what you need to get out of is the guilt because it uses the guilt to 
perpetuate itself. Are you getting it? And Lord, is not Go back to the scene one, then we'll come to this one. Go back to the scene one. Scene one, I think it is stanza three. Go back to the one that deals with sin. I think it is stanza three. If I'm not mistaken, this one is the last one. Go back to that one and put it up for us. My sin. From that sin today, that sin that torments you, not in but take your deliverance. the devil didn't get it. My sin oh the please of this glory yes, my sin not in my but the Lord. Hallelujah Hallelujah Manifest now. And Lord, is the day when my faith shall be sound. The clouds be rolled down as a scroll. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Somebody now. Yeah. 